when the race was over, he they went out there and he was upside down hanging from a tree. <laughs> he couldn't even get out. So I'd like you to come up and uh, just look around, see what you think. And so I got my little airplane, flew up there, and I walk in the gate and he said, uh, you're gonna have to drive, I'm sick. It was after practice. So he said, buddy, I never even sat in a modified. He says, well, you're starting fourth in the heat race. <laughs> you have to find that. It's a red, red modified. It's in this state. Yeah, there it is. Beautiful, beautiful car. Oh, here's another picture of it. So anyway, I go out there and I'm pacing around there in second gear. And they threw the green. I went from second to third and spun it all the way down the front chute. And the last modified clipped me a little bit on the right rear tire. So in the modified, they just hook on you with the tow truck and they just leave you sitting there and they drag you in off the wall. So they hooked onto the front of this thing and towed me to the pit road and this micro ram was like 6'4". And I pulled in there, I looked up at him, I said, how you like me so far, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> he laughed. He said, well, let's see how you do in a feature. So anyway, I started last and I finished eighth. I did really good. But Jimmy Spencer led every lap of that race until the last lap. And that Magic Shoes McLaughlin or whatever his name was, cool. passed him on the last lap. Jimmy Spencer pulled right in front of me on pit road after the race. And he was getting out of his modified and his old man come over who was about a foot shorter than him. Never said a word, he punched him right in the mouth. Just punched, punched Jimmy? Jimmy right in the mouth, knocked him over the left front tire. Jimmy went rolling. And his old man, while he was laying on the ground, his old man pointed at him and says, don't you ever lose the race on the last lap again, and walked away. Who was that guy? His old man. That was his dad? Yeah. His dad punched him in the face because he lost the race? Yeah. Oh my God. True story. <laughs> I witnessed it. He come right over. They, they were junkyard dogs up in Berwick. They, they'd fight each other all the time out in the junkyards. The brothers and all that, the cousins, they they, I never saw it, but they claimed they shoot each other and everything up at the junkyard. They were crazy. <laughs> but the old man came over and punched, he had to reach up. He punched him right in the chin, knocked him over that left front tire. So don't you re ever lose a race again on the last lap and walk away. Wow. True story. <laughs> it was the first time I ever ran a modified. Well, years ago, I won the figure eight championship, and uh, we used to tow the tow the race car, the racetrack with a tow bar. And I used to hope that I didn't rip a wheel off or something because I wouldn't be able to get it home. <laughs> but uh, we won the championship and actually won 14 out of 17 of the races. Figure eight racing? Yeah. That's gotta be like that. Just I don't know how that works. How well, do you I'm not? Not very good once in a while. If you don't time it right, <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was really good at it. I started last in every race, but the first one because I won the first one, then I was leading the points. And uh, I was crazy back then. I remember the, the battery was in the passenger on the floor in a box, and it caught on fire one night, and I still won the race. <laughs> and the battery was burning. <laughs> Another time, the seat belts. The bolts came loose on the seat. The seat was falling out. I had my arm up on the roof holding me up. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I could tell stories for a long time. What track was that at? Heidelberg. Heidelberg. Yeah. yeah. I know where that is. I never. I don't think I was ever alive when it was still in existence. But for the longest time, I didn't know it was right there off 79. Like I passed this spot a million times. That was just state of the art back then he had the best lighting it was a half mile asphalt track uh, you know nascar race there they i but back when it was dirt way back in the, whatever it was the 40s or something lee petty won the first race there i think that was lee petty's first nascar win was at heidelberg because yeah. we did a video with uh, maurice's sons and they had the trophy from it yeah 
I'm like, wow, that's cool. I didn't know that the that's like kind of the first petty win was in Pittsburgh. Yeah. So, but that place, like I said, he was he was ahead of his time. It's kind of a shame. Uh, Hill Shopping Center bought it and turned it into a department store. Uh, what other of the local tracks did you race at back in the day? Lernerville Speedway, which is still there. I was just there with Larson and uh, uh, Rico Abreu. I know them pretty good. I went up there and watched them race about a month ago. Uh, Motor Drum Speedway, which is closed now. I raced there. Jennerstown Speedway, which is also an NASCAR sanctioned track. Uh, I'm just trying to think of all the places. Uh, of Pennsylvania Motor Speedway is where I won most of my races. Hmm. It's a 5H high bank dirt track. and uh, I won a third of the races I entered out there. And, uh, it's still there. In fact, somebody else just bought it. And, uh, it's right 15 minutes from Greater Pittsburgh Airport. So was your dad racing when you were a little kid? Yeah, he raced a lot. He used to race <clears throat> South Park on Thursday night, so, uh, Clinton Friday night, Heidelberg Saturday night, and somewhere else on Sunday night. <laughs> How old were you when you got into That was before I was born. He was racing. In fact, there was, a, there was a track up on the side of this hill called Mon Duke. Huh. And they told me stories about he was in some sort of modified he didn't have any guardrails except for where the grandstands were and he went out over the racetrack and nobody saw him <laughs> and the, when the race was over he they went out there and he was upside down hanging from a tree <laughs> he couldn't even get out out of the car wow well. hanging there <laughs> but uh he was he either won or got banged up he he raced really hard he, he never owned anything he drove for other people and even if he tore something up there'd be somebody there saying well you drive my car he was one year at heidelberg he won every big big race at that racetrack including the pittsburgher and the tri-state and all he won every one of them see that car right there has a butler pre-owned sticker on it did you ever deal with ed Faree? i knew him i used to beat him <laughs> so I guess he was like I forget about him he was like one of the only other guys that was ever in this area who did stuff like that he owned Franklin gear Franklin rear ends or something for a while huh. this this uh, place we're going right at the top of this hill what did you do at this shop well we we work on things in this shop also Again, uh, you know, it's for the last month it's been the Haunted Hills Hayride. Bruce runs that. And, uh, he's a friend of mine. But we have this we have this building up here and it's uh, I believe a 70 by 90. Was your dad supportive of you wanting to race or did you have to convince him? No, he he was hundred percent behind me. He didn't really approve all, all the time of the way I raced because I wasn't very safe. <laughs> <laughs> he was there when I was holding myself up, my hand out the window with all these race cars. And, uh, he thought that was kind of crazy. But... What was your first race in a full-size car? It was probably Clinton. I drove for somebody else and, and finished third. And I decided I can I can do it better, so I built my own car and, and went out and won all those races. And, uh, yeah, I raced at Clinton, Heidelberg, 